Okay, so this is Mario once again with MIA Microflight, and uh, the purpose of this video is um, <clears throat> to illustrate uh, some uh, uh, ways that uh, one can construct uh, a radio control model. In this particular case, I've been working on this uh, Savage Bobber. <clears throat> By the way, this is not a kit. I don't plan on making a kit out of this. This is strictly for personal uh, use and to uh, illustrate in this video the uh, various uh, differences uh, in ways that uh, one can go about making a, a model such as The Savage Bobber is, I believe, a newcomer to the world of uh, full-scale ultralights in the sense that it uh, has an open frame design. There is no covering in the tail section, but basically it's a Piper um, structure. Uh, it has no windows, no doors. It's very open frame uh, to allow the uh, um, pilot or the uh, passenger the experience of uh, full freedom while you're flying this in the air. Um, I believe the company that uh, designed this uh, uh, mentioned something to the effect that, that um, they wanted to uh, give the customer uh, a little more customization in the full aircraft by introducing uh, some of the uh, features that you would see in a uh, Harley Davidson motorcycle. So does the luggage uh, saddlebags and just the open frame the big wheels you know it's very very stocky very very uh, bush type aircraft so that is where this uh, savage barber uh, comes from from my understanding of what i have read and my uh, just uh, my personal uh, uh, thoughts on, on the open frame design So what you're seeing here is basically uh, uh, the models that I've been building. I, uh, I don't have the full plans, uh, so I had to use uh, photographs and some basic sketches of the actual Piper design. And I took uh, measurements of that, transferred those to the uh, computer uh, using a CAD program. And from there, I've been working out all these uh, little parts that you see here, including these uh, connectors, retaining the framework. Uh, 3D print parts, as you see this right here, these are my own parts in my own way of doing things. Uh, I've seen a lot of airplanes that are coming out uh, full 3D printed, which uh, in my personal opinion um, not I the right way to approach a radio control model because you know you're printing the when you print a full aircraft out of 3D printed material uh, even some of that lighter uh, PLA that uh, people claim it's, it's super lightweight, and it probably is, uh, but when you crash model, you want some durability there, some, and uh, you know you want to be able to uh, withstand some some crashes. And from what I've seen, all the videos that I've seen of 3D printed models, you know one crash and it all it takes, and then the model is useless, and you have to basically go back and reprint. The other thing is when you print parts, you know, when you're printing uh, uh, small parts like this, they, they take a long time. Not to mention, you know, a full aircraft that where, where you have the full body and, the, you know, even the, there's a Savage Bobber that's uh, uh, 3D printed, where they're 3D printing these parts is kind of crazy. You know, why why even go that, that step and just, just build it out of carbon like, I, like I've been doing, you know, all my ultralights, you know, since uh, I started selling ultralights back in 1999. So... From that perspective, I see the uh, you know 3D printed models not not an efficient uh, approach uh, to manufacturing or to building models. Uh, the other thing is that some of these uh, lightweight PLAs uh, they are very expensive and they're very hard to work with. Anybody that has uh, done the 3D printing can tell you that 3D printing is is an art in itself and it requires a little bit of technical uh, know-how and you got to be uh, prepared to do some tweaking here and there to be able to arrive at, at a good um, uh, solid point where you can get consistent parts and so that takes a little while it's not it's not meant for for everybody you know it's not that user friendly as some people would uh, lead um, people to believe um, so we have to take all those things into consideration I did this uh, balsa stick uh, frame uh, to get um, an idea of weight as compared to uh, carbon rods of similar size. 
and and it's also as compared to something a little more sturdy as is what you see here with my own connectors, the MIA Microflight trademark connectors that you see here. When you go from a, a similar type of assembly between balsa and carbon rod, if you just lay this over the plan and start gluing things, you can achieve similar weight uh, values when you're done with the frame. But if you stick with traditional methods, you know, you can end up with very much a similar frame. And so in that respect, my preference would be for carbon, uh, a carbon frame, a carbon rod frame such as this one here. And that's the reason why I also did this one is too, so that I can talk about these things with, a, with some uh, visual perspective so that the viewer can have a, a clear uh, view and uh, understanding of uh, what I mean when I say certain uh, techniques are much better for certain types of products. In this case, this has to fly, and in my view, the way I like to design things, you know, my, my models have to not only perform, but they have to be durable and look the part, you know, be realistic. Performance, durability, realism, those are the three uh, characteristics that MIA Microflight is very keen on any time that I do a model, and, and more so when I put out a model uh, as a kit. You know, they, it, it has to uh, conform to those uh, um, characteristics and those specifications and regulations that I set when I establish MIA Microflight. So which one of these assemblies is best? My preference is for this particular one, the way you see it here. Although it, it does use um, quite a bit of uh, 3D printed parts to reinforce the frame, I still like this, this frame, although it's going to come out a little bit heavier than just a, a balsa model like this. However, the dur durability on this uh, particular uh, assembly is much, much better than a frame that's made out of a 3D printed um, tail section, you know, this is this section 3D printed, uh, 3D printed parts, basically a full 3D printed model. Why is this better? Because I'm using carbon rods as my structure here, as my, my, my framework, my base for the other things such as stabilizers and the wing. And so this is a much, much better uh, approach to doing this model and that's the reason why I build this this way. The balsa uh, frame that you see here, I did it just for reference sake. I don't plan on flying this because um, I know that, you know, one good crash and that's it. So I'm going to keep this just as, uh, as a show and tell piece. Uh, it is a very lightweight frame, by the way. Stabilizers, the way I design these, are very similar to the way I design ultralight micro airplanes, the way the ones that operate on one cell. I'm, I like to be uh, very efficient with power. I mean, I, I see people building uh, similar uh, Savage Bobber, do it yourselfers, and they put, uh, you know, three, four cells on, on, on the little aircraft. You know, that's, that's kind of defeating the purpose of, of uh, having the, the aircraft up in the air and, and having it be uh, somewhat uh, crash proof. You know, you, you put heavier items, heavier batteries, you're going to end up with a, with a brick, basically. And some of these videos show that. It's been particularly the ones that are three, full 3D printed, you know, there's quite a bit of weight in the 3D printed models, and then you add, you know, the, uh, the wings and all that, it adds up. I don't like to use brute power, and in a true, true ultralight, you should be able to fly a model with a two, two cell. My um, small ones, that I've, I have plenty of videos that, that, to show that, they all fly on one cell. Uh, they do have a gear motor, you know, to uh, swing a bigger propeller. And, and so this can also work in similar ways with a gear system, which I have employed in my larger uh, quarter-scale uh, aircraft. Sometimes you you know you you can do that, or, or you can go direct with a brushless motor, provided it's uh, it's a low uh, KV and has a, a high torque, so that you can swing a higher propeller without having the motor cease in the process of uh, uh, operating. So in terms of uh, having a combination of these 3D printed parts and, and carbon uh, rod frame and some additional parts here just to uh, give you a little more uh, a realism and have a little more aesthetic appeal, I would say it's a good blend. The way I make my stabilizers is these right here because they 
were designed so that I can put a foam insert. You can see these foam pieces here. So this would fit inside here, like so, and it would have to be retained with uh, either contact cement or some, uh, uh, some other adhesive that it's not going to add too much weight. Hot glue tends to add weight, and so I don't like to use hot glue on uh, some of these uh, models uh, where, where I'm, I'm watching the, the weight. It's in particular, the tail section has to be very, very lightweight. The lighter you keep the tail section, the better you know, your, your aircraft is going to perform. The lighter you keep your wing, the better the model is going to perform. I have, uh, <clears throat> I have this model here that I did uh, recently to prove my point here that any time that you go with foam in a double wing with an upper and lower section you know you add considerable weight even this Depron here that I'm using here this is uh, actually not Depron this is a Dollar, dollar Tree um, uh, foam uh, uh, sheets or foam board that I removed out the paper which would be like that I removed the paper so it's lighter but it's 3 16 in, in, in thickness even that is too thick, you know, for a model like this. Uh, you can get away with much, much lighter uh, w wings and, uh, and and methods, as as I also show in my other um, ultralight uh, foamies. You know, the the very uh, slow flyers that also operate on one and two cells. So th that's just my approach. I could have gone with ribs here. You know, if you if I wanted to use a uh, covering, I removed the ribs because. This was my my um, this was my approach here, you know, just to go with a framework of the three D printed part and attach the foam piece as as the uh, the filler, if you will. And so this keeps this section a lot lighter than if you were to three D print this whole thing in in uh, in sections plus. I'm saving a lot of time in in three D printing because to print, you know, this alone it takes quite a bit of time and then to, to print the full elevators, uh, rudders, stabilizers, you know, if in, in 3D printed material, it takes it takes a lot, a lot of time and I just don't, don't think that's a good way to, to do the uh, models. Um, um, so that's the way I'm doing that. The wing here I'm not showing just yet. Uh, this does have a plate here the, for the profile of the wing. Uh, just like the, the the real full aircraft uh, um, has, this is also real, I shouldn't say real because this is also a real model, but I should say the full scale aircraft has the profile of the wing and then the wings attached to, to that. Very similar, uh, this model also has uh, the wing. I have to uh, finish the wing. The wing will have uh, flaps as well as ailerons, just like I show on my blue one here, on my blue core uh, um, uh, Decatha Light that I show in some other videos, uh, this model will also have th that and it, it'll have the the typical STOL um, features or uh, characteristics that these uh, full aircrafts uh, have, short takeoff and landing, uh, very, uh, very slow flying uh, capability. And so that's been my, my approach, uh, you know, with this particular uh, Savage Bobber. And, and it's done my way because I am introducing some elements here that are strictly MIA microflight elements in the way I assemble things. The, you know, some, some of the methods of, of construction are I, I've employed here. They come from my experience uh, again in uh, designing, uh, manufacturing uh, kits, full ultralight radio control ultralight, true ultralight kits. You know, for the hobby market since 1999. So that's where all that experience comes from. And so a model like this is really not not a big of a deal for me to do. It is a little bit time consuming because I have to basically uh, design all these parts from scratch. But it goes pretty fast once you once you have the the layout of the the aircraft on, on CAD. The way I like to work is uh, section in sections. You know, I do the the connectors first because the the frame needs to be assembled. Once I do the tail section, I do the the, the front connectors. Get all that done so that I can have the frame. Once I have the frame, then I can work on these pieces here, and that's how I approach this product. And then I start adding the details, such as the, the seats. Saddlebags, as you can see them here, uh, they looked apart. The uh, this took me a little while because it's, it's an organic uh, design that uh, I needed to do in uh, one, two, three, four. This has like five. Um, five or six different uh, 
uh, design elements, and then when I combine the, all these elements, um, you know, you end up with a, a model like this in, in 3D uh, CAD. But it's very similar to building the, the real thing. If you were to build these out of leather, you know, you would have to create patterns for the for the uh, for the middle section of this bag here. You would have to create a pattern for the uh, outer section of the the, the flap and, and the the back. Then you have to create another section for the front. Then you have to create an, another section here for this detail here that you see here, this this uh, rounded uh, uh, profile. And then you have to do the straps. So if you approach 3D models in that respect. Uh, very similar to the way uh, the, the real products are, are built. Um, that's one way to, to approach it. I mean, there may be some other ways, but at least that's the way I, I like approaching things. And that's how these luggage uh, bags were created. There's two of them there, independently done. And also you have to think about how this is going to be printed, because not everything that is uh, organic can be printed uh, and, and come up uh, you know, nice and straight. So you have to think about how you're going to orient this part as the printer is going and layering the material. Uh, not only that, but there's also, you know, in parts that need to be uh, printed strong, you have to consider the uh, not only the geometry, but the orientation, uh, the amount of infill, the amount of material, the type of material you're using. So there's a lot of, a lot of things that t go into designing things. It's not just whipping something, uh, you, you know, for the, for the hell of it and having it looked apart. No, at least uh, the way I like approaching things, they have to be, uh, they have to meet all those things. This is a very lightweight bag too. I, I didn't want to make this too heavy, and so I had to, I had to, uh, I had to tweak the uh, not only the thickness but uh, some of the uh, interior uh, design of this particular shape. There are two bags, and then there's a center piece that joins both of them here. So when I printed uh, this uh, item here, that I printed them in three pieces. The two bags, saddle bags, and then the centerpiece, which runs right through that rod there and connects there. And I can even take that out. See, I can even slide it and take it out. Uh, but for the model, it, it just needs to remain. As this, it just remains uh, intact. It's not moving anymore. These are my own seats that I did for a, a radio control a micro light. So I decided to repurpose them and use them here. Uh, because it just fit the, the, the design uh, quite quite nicely and it's kind of similar to the, the original uh, leather seats that are employed on the full scale aircraft. That's why they have my MIA uh, logo there. The floor here is uh, also done in 3D printed. It's done in sections, one, two, three sections here. Um, and they, are, they also interlock with the uh, carbon uh, uh, structure here to provide rigidity, uh, a solid reference, and, and a, a very squared uh, finish on the, uh, on the frame. And actually, the pieces that really hold everything in square, along with this piece here, uh, you can see it's got that little cross mark. And if you look at the real aircraft, it's got bars here that are welded. In this case, I didn't, I didn't use carbon rods here. I decided to do it like this. But you could also use carbon rods here, or you could... Um, in, in the balsa model, you, you can use uh, balsa sticks like I did here that are reinforced with this plate on top of here. This piece right here uh, also has to be uh, done in, uh, I did this in paper, very much like I did this one here to uh, find out the location of these holes so that you have a precise fit there. This is more precise than this one here because this one I just eyeballed it when I did the uh, uh, when I did this part I had to come back and, and re-drill these holes so I kind of drilled the holes well I, I actually measured it not eyeballed it and then I uh, uh, located these holes but the holes were a little too small and so I ended up uh, opening them up so that it would uh, have um, enough uh, clearance for that angle that is required for this rod here and that's why these holes are a little bit big here. <clears throat> The uh, firewall here is uh, is ready to accept a, a extender here for the motor because the motor does extend quite a, quite a bit on the on the Savage Barber rod uh, uh, design. So this uh, I was going to do it with uh, just spacers and mount the motor there, and that will take care of that. And then the cowl, which I show in some other videos, which is also done, just fits over that nicely. This uh, also requires a cover, and this can also be done with uh, a 3D printed part, but it starts adding weight, you know, anytime you start uh, doing parts like this, even though these are very thin, um, 
they they start building up um, in in weight. The wheels that you see here are also 3D printed, and these, believe me, they're the same weight as these. These are very li very lightweight. These are done with foam, uh, plate mat foam. That is just uh, two two pieces here. I think these are a half inch uh, in width or five eighths. And I just joined them with a uh, contact cement. Join the two pieces raw uh, when they're when they're cut raw, you know, with a with a die, uh, or you can also cut these with a you know the circular saw. Uh, there's so many ways to cut this. You can cut them with a hot wire, etc. But once you get, have the, the the raw profile, then you throw this on a lathe and then you start shaping it. And that's how I I shape these uh, wheels like that. There are other methods that uh, can be done, but unless you're um, manufacturing. Uh, uh, for production, uh, doing it this way is is just fine. Some people use a drill and they chuck this with a drill in a, in a bolt right through the center and a nut to hold it in place, and then they start shaping it, you know, by by hand. I do it on a lathe; and it's, get, it's a little more precise that way. But these wheels are a second or third version of a 3D printed wheel. Just done in PLA. I just wanted to see how how much weight I could uh, achieve and see if I can maintain that that weight uh, value to this one. I don't remember the, the value uh, off the top of my head, but it's, it's very lightweight. It's very it's very similar to this one here. The only thing is that I, I could not use this wheel unless I reinforce this with somehow with a, some kind of a rubber material. And I've also done that in some other of my uh, some of my other ultralights um, uh, that I built, you know, using uh, uh, Depron, uh, Depron wheels reinforced with a uh, piece of uh, EVA foam. EVA foam is, is, is uh, it's not like Depron, but it's a little more rubbery. So this is how I uh, approach the wheels. I mentioned in another video that this uses my uh, trademark uh, hardware uh, parts. You can see this in many, many of the, our, our uh, products that I've been uh, selling in kit form. And so I decided to use the same, uh, uh, the same approach here to uh, do this. I could 3D print or I could 3D design, design the, the, the connectors that go on the on the uh, landing gear is, is the full scale one. Uh, I could do that, but there's no way I can beat this. this is, these are nylon parts, by the way. The servos uh, will sit uh, either uh, in here, just to uh, get the balance, because uh, uh, even though this model is very lightweight, the way I, I'm doing it here with the uh, 3D printed uh, profiles here is the, the, the framework for the Stabilizers and the rudder and elevator uh, still is a, is a little heavier. You know, if I were to uh, balance this, complete the assembly. By the way, this needs to be connected here, so right now it's a little bit loose. Um, it balances about right there as as we see it, which is not bad because this is not including the motor. With the motor in the front, it should balance it about at about 25 percent from the uh, root. Of the uh, of the wing, and so it would be from this point here, 25 percent, which is about right there. And that's where the model should balance with, you know, with the with the motor, uh, the the, the cowl, and, and the battery and the electronics. But I will be putting the electronics somewhere around here uh, because I do want them out of the way. I don't want to see uh, I, I don't want to see the uh, the servos underneath here. I want to keep this as clean as possible, so it looks uh, a little more realistic. All these 3D printed parts also have integral uh, um, horns that are part of the uh, part of the design. So you can see them here. They they're already ready to accept the uh, the links. Then we'll clip uh, right there, and that'll work the uh, the elevator and, and rudder. Very similar to the way I did these, except that this gray one came out a little heavier because I went a little too thick on the profile here. So on this one, I, I um, remove some of the bulk by going uh, thinner on the on the uh, profile. So this is uh, where this project is uh, at right now. I will probably do another video as I complete this, but I wanted to capture this and show the uh, major major differences in uh, in approach in building a model such as this one here. So uh, I just need to finish the wing here and uh, I will be doing the wing very similar to uh, the way I did this one right here. 
you know, it's got my own ribs, my own uh, way of attaching the servos. This is an under camber wing, and I will keep this under camber just to uh, keep it lighter either and enjoy a, a longer um, and, and more crash proof a flight. You know, that's a give and take. So I tend to lean on that side. And so in that case, you know, you start, you got, you got to start minimizing weight and, and removing things that you really don't need. You know, that, that are more of a, a luxury. Um, you know, at the uh, in exchange for uh, much longer flights and more crash proof uh, models, lighter models. So this is where I'm at with this project and I wanted to capture this on video. I hope uh, that you like this. If you like this video, please, uh, you know, give me a thumbs up or uh, if you have any comments, post them there and I'll try to answer them um, accordingly. Mario Wendell, Miami Microflight, thank you for watching.